Hey everybody and welcome to AK Pro Films, your source for tech tutorials and more. And on this video, I'm going to show you Automator and how you can use Automator to make your life so much easier on a Mac and to make applications such as this one right down here that I made for myself and for my computer. Just one more thing to say, sorry for not putting out that many uploads lately, I've been pretty busy so I'm going to start making those videos right away such as this one. So stay tuned if you want to learn more about Automator and how you can use Automator to make nice applications. Alright, so let's jump right into this tutorial of Automator. So what you want to do is first open up Automator and it will be found in your Applications folder right in the A section because it is called Automator. You just want to double click on that. And also you can find this in Launchpad as well. So just double click to open up Automator. You can close out a Finder as well. Alright, so here are the types of documents that you can create using Automator. You can create workflows, applications, services, print plugins, and a lot more. So it just has a whole array of things that you can make. So let's just start by making a workflow. Double click on that. And here it is, a very simple user interface. You can add things by going to the actions section over here. And you can add different actions to your workflow. There's also a variables section that you can add variables as well, such as the current day, month, time, and all of that. So let's just go to the actions. So first what we want to do is make the application ask for text. But first you don't know exactly what the application will do, so let me just give you what we'll be making first and foremost. So I just made this application called Quick Search, and when you click on the application icon, it will prompt you to enter a web address. And you can enter a web address right here. So let's enter one. Oops. And then when you press go, it'll say, are you sure you want to go to apple.com? And there's a little prompt message right here. And we just want to press yes. All right, so then it pulled it up right on apple.com over here. And it is very nice and easy to open up a web address. So that is what we'll be making today. So let's dive right in. So first we want to make that prompt message that asks you to enter the web address. So let's ask the user for some text. So you want to go up to the search field right here, and when you and you want to type in ask for text. So we want to go to ask for text and drag and drop it into our workflow. And we want to change the question to say enter a web address. Alright, so then we don't really need to have a default answer because they know what a web address is, but let's enter one anyways, just to give them a sample of what an address looks like in case they don't know the proper format. So I'll just put ex for example, apple.com. So it's very easy, and let's check this box to require this as an answer. Check that, and let's change the OK to a go, all right? We can leave that as cancel, so that's just fine. All right, so now let's actually make a variable. So now let's type in set value of variable, and let's drag and drop that into our program. So let's just call a new variable, and let's name it storage. That's totally fine. So let's press done, and it'll set this answer as a variable that we can call later. Uh, Alright, so let's ask for confirmation so the user knows where they are going. So let's drag that in and let's type in, are you sure you want to go to, make sure there's a space there, and go down to this variable list. If it isn't checked down here, it's these two little lines. So you just want to drag the variable name into your ask for confirmation. And then it'll say, are you sure you want to go to that web address they entered in this as for text block? 
Let's just end that with a question mark. And then we can enter a explanation if we want to, but we really don't need to. So let's just say by pressing go, you will give the application access to open up Safari. All right. So that works just like that. Now let's change this icon to a warning triangle so that you know that it's asking for a confirmation message. So now let's clear it by pressing this X and let's go to the internet folder right over here. And we'll narrow it down to all of the internet actions. So now let's just say, uh, let's say, uh, go to the web page. Well, it's actually display the web pages, so let's drag that display web pages down into here, and it'll display the web page that they entered for the ask for text. So that's pretty sweet. We got the project up and running, so now let's run it by pressing the run button up here. So it brings up a web address that we have to enter. Let's just go to google.com, but remember that we have to have the www. And let's press go. And it'll say, are you sure you want to go to google.com? And just press OK. Or we can just change it to go if we want to. Let's just press OK. So then it opens up google.com. Pretty sweet there. So it just this program just makes it a whole lot easier to open up the internet and search for something instead of actually going into Safari, going up to the address bar, and typing in the destination you want to go to. So the last step of our journey is to save and find an icon. So we want to go to, oops, we want to click on here, and we want to go to File, Save, and we want to save it as an application, not a workflow. So let's just save it to our desktop, and let's name it Quick Search. 2.0 because I just made a new release of it. So now let's just press save. Let's minimize automator here. And we can see that we have Quick Search 2.0 right here on our desktop. So now let's go over to Google Images and search for a magnifying glass that we can use and make sure it has this transparent background and narrow it down by going magnifying glass and just adding .png. But here is a great magnifying glass. So let's just save this image. Right click. Save image as desktop. Quick search point O icon. Press save. There we go. Up here. And let's drag that over. Here's quick search. Let's get the information by pressing get info. We can see we have the icon there, so let's replace it with this one. And there we go. I guess it is not displaying it, so let's actually go into uh, this launch pad. And there's actually an application on the internet called, let's navigate to that. It is called Image to Icons, and that is how we change the image to an icon. So search Google for IMG2ICNS. I will put a link in the description. And you just want to drag your image onto Image to Icons. And by clicking on Icons, there we go. And let's save it to our desktop. Press Choose. And so here is our Icons file. And let's drag that on here. So that is pretty sweet. It changed the application icon to this quick search logo. So we can drag it to our dock. We can place it wherever we want to have quick access to it. And we can also remove it like that. So that is a basic tutorial of how to use Automator. If you found this tutorial helpful, please comment to rate and subscribe. And please make sure to like this video. And if you have any questions, as always, leave those down in the comment section. You can also find AK Pro Films on Twitter at AK Pro Films, and you can also go there to find more information regarding the channel and also, as always, on our website as well. All those links will be in the description. 
and stay tuned for the next video by subscribing, and I will see you then. Thanks for watching.